Bruce Arians joining us, Tampa Bay head coach. Uh, you know what? My staff didn't realize how great a running quarterback you were in college. <laughs> do your do your players know? I think you had 11 touchdowns one year, didn't you? Yeah, the record held for a long time, and then Gerard Evans beat it. But he played 15 games. I only played 11. <laughs> so there's an asterisk on it. <laughs> how was your arm? I was very average. When, I, when we were a passing team, I was a running cornerback. <laughs> We're a running team out the passing quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Does it help you look at the offense differently having played the position? Oh, totally. Yeah, the the having played in so many different offenses in college, you know, had the, the pleasure of playing for Dan Henning when Don Strzok led the nation in passing as his backup and then running the wishbone. So uh, saw two totally sides, different sides of the game when I was playing. Who was your favorite quarterback growing up? Johnny Unitas. Yeah, the Baltimore Colts were my team. Did you ever meet him? I, I did. Uh, they came and played a uh, basketball game against a radio station, and we were like the preliminary game. <laughs> and uh, we dressed in the same locker room. So I, I put his trench coat on it. They left. I put his trench coat on his hat. At that time, he had a he had a commercial for a deodorant soap. I was walking around the locker room with his coat on. <laughs> what struck me when I met him was that he wasn't tall. Because, you know, growing up, when you saw, like when I met Jack Nicholas, I thought the Golden Bear is like 6'2", 6'3". Johnny Unitas was like 5'11", it felt like, maybe six feet. Those guys, Lenny Moore, uh, Mike Curtis, I mean, everybody in the Baltimore Colts, those were my heroes. Uh, when you went down 10 to nothing to Aaron Rodgers, what were you thinking on the sidelines? Exhale. <laughs> you know, just where we were holding our breath. We were, we came out a little bit tight on both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, I think Todd Bowles did a great job with the defense on the side. You know, we're letting him out of the pocket, get everything covered. Um, let's just exhale and go play faster. And that defense, it, it felt like they were kind of conservative or you, you weren't uh, pushing Rodgers or being aggressive like that. Or at least it felt like that in the beginning. Then all of a sudden it was like, Ali Ali income free. Let's go get him. Let's let's force him to make some some magic here. Was that the game plan? Uh, no, we actually went after early. We just let him out of the pocket. He scrambled on the first third and ten. We dumped somebody, kept rushing the quarterback, let the back out, and uh, just a matter of doing your job. Uh, but again, the game plan was to stop the run, shut the run down, and then go get him. And, you know, you start to watch this team now. I don't know how many games it usually takes you each season before you go, okay, now I know who my team is. Do you know who your team is now? I, I think we've known defensively. Uh, offensively, we're stressed, still scratching the surface. We've missed so much time in the offseason. So each week's a new week for us offensively. And uh, with all the injuries on offense, uh, getting guys back now, I think we can start finding ourselves. And – you know, just trying to figure this out, you got to obviously, you know, Tom knew there and you didn't get the offseason workouts. You got injuries with your wide receiver. Like how dynamic can this offense be or do you want it to be? Oh, I, th I think it could be one of the tops. You know, uh, we're running the ball well right now. Offensive line's healthy, knock on woods and, and blocking well. So um, with with Ronald Jones running and getting Leonard Fournette back, um, just makes the game easy for Tom. And then now the receivers are all getting healthy. And uh, you know, he didn't even practice with those guys for three weeks. And uh, so it should just get better and better. Did you guys make a run at Le'Veon Bell? No. You're fine with the running backs that you have? Oh, yeah. We're, <laughs> yeah we got more than enough. <laughs> By the way, seven questions before I brought up Tom Brady's name. That might be a record, Coach. There you go. Yeah. How's Gronk doing? Because it felt like he was kind of laboring there starting this season. But, uh, you know, he did have a touchdown catch. So how would you assess where he is right now? I, I think he's he's playing really, really good. You know, his, his number, when teams want to double cover Mike Evans, it kind of opens up the field for Gronk. And, uh, he, and he he was working through it early in the season. He's in, he's in great shape. And uh, I think we're doing a better job of coaching um, him up a little bit and and Tom, too. Uh, as far as when we're seeing different coverages, where we want to go with the ball. Is Gronk goofy? He's uh, he's unusual. <laughs> he's, a, he's a hell of a lot of fun, though, man. He is a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> Give me an example. Uh, just talking to him. Like, dude, did your elevator go all the way to the top? I mean, I'm not sure, but uh, it is fun. <laughs> 
Can you imagine Belichick, though, and him? You know how Belichick is. Like, you got a sense of humor, and, you know, you're pretty back and forth with players, but I can't imagine Belichick, you know, just laughing at Gronk or allowing Gronk to be Gronk. I don't, yeah, I just don't think you can help it. And I think Bill probably had a lot of smiles on his face when he was coaching him, too. What is it about Brady that uh, has surprised you so far? His interaction with young players, um, I think, is outstanding. He's like another coach. Uh, and, you know, you can, as a coach, you can tell a guy, keep pumping his arms, keep doing this, come out of your breaks. But when he says it, they listen for some reason. And uh, it's just amazing seeing him work with these young guys uh, because of the injuries to Chris and Mike and having to put young guys in there who never played and him just coaching them up, trusting them. Um, I, I, you know, everybody gets on him about getting on people. I love when he gets on people. Hell, I don't have to do it then. But, you know, everything you do this year because Tom's in town is scrutinized. Like, I don't know if you've ever felt this way before where the national media is going, oh, did you hear what Arian said to, about Bray? <laughs> like, that. This is these are headlines here. Like, have you felt this way before at any time in your coaching career where everybody was watching what you were doing and scrutinizing it? Not really. It's... Uh... This is this is different. We knew what we were getting into, and uh, just embrace it and have fun with it. Yeah, but you know, Bill Parcells used to yell at Phil Sims when Lawrence Taylor would make a mistake. Like, can you yell at Tom so everybody knows that I'm yelling at Tom, and and you know nobody's untouchable here? Uh, that, that that's happened in practice, but it's more Blaine Gabbert gets to ask you and all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't yell at Tom, you yell at Gabbard. Oh, yeah, and he relates the message. <laughs> but Tom Tom hears me, so. <laughs> Poor it was always that way. With, it was always that way with Ben. Tra Byron Leftwich and Charlie Bass got cussed out all the time. <laughs> Instead of Roethlisberger? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, the, you're dealing with egos, though, when you're dealing with the quarterback. Like, like, is it more fragile dealing with a quarterback than any other position? Oh, totally, totally. Uh, their, their mindset the, the, the vibe that they're in, you know, you don't want to change it, uh, but you want to get your point across too. Uh, the ball should be here. And uh, it's, it's, it's fun though. It's, it's, it's been a great, great time coaching him. But I would think with wide receivers, cause they're always open and they're always complaining that they would be hard to deal with too. I've had some in the past. This group is as selfless as I've ever been around. You know, Mike Evans, as long as we're, he don't, we win, lose, draw. If he catches one or he catches 10, he's the same guy. Chris Godwin's the same way. So we're very, very fortunate in that regard. Who, who was the diva that you had? <laughs> Let's just say there were a few. <laughs> <laughs> how many uh, How many Kango hats do you own? Oh, gosh, about 30 or 40. But they're all new era. Oh, okay. Do you have the cream sickle? No, I couldn't get it made. I'm still working on that one. Oh, that'd be good, though. You bring... When are you guys going creamsicle? I think it's going to be a while. I, you know, hopefully next year when the uniform rules loosen up a little bit, we can have a different helmet. Oh, so you can't do it this year? No, no, because of the helmet. Is that you can only have one helmet. Oh, man. Tell Tom to do it. They won't find him. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, the commissioner, of course, he won't find Tom. Uh, Coach, congratulations, and uh, good luck. You got Sunday night against the Raiders, and uh, – and that should be fun at the Raiders. So thanks for joining us. You bet, Pat. Anytime. All right. That's uh, Bruce Arians, Buccaneers head coach.